All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, we're going to be going over how to set up Nextcloud on AWS LightSail to create your Nextcloud instance to be truly a cloud instance where you don't have to set it up at home and worry about all of that bandwidth. Instead, you can just set up on a server on AWS and pay the low monthly fee and have them manage it more or less all for you in terms of the connections into it and guaranteeing pretty much 100% uptime. And this is a great way to set up Nextcloud for your business or just your own personal life where you want all your family members to have a one shared central Nextcloud instance where everybody can work off of it and you don't have to worry about your power going out and somebody not having access to their photos or anything like that. So I've already done a few LightSail videos, so this is going to assume you've already at least got a AWS LightSail account. It's really easy to set up if not, and that's pretty much all you need other than a domain name. You can buy one off of Google and that's what I'm gonna be using, but basically any domain name where you can assign an A record to a static IP address will work perfectly for this. And this domain name is actually going to be how you access your Nextcloud instance. All right, so first off, what is Nextcloud? Nextcloud is essentially a Google Drive competitor. It has calendar, photos, everything that is in Google Drive, except it's all self-hosted and open source. This means you don't have to wonder about who's got access to your data, when in reality, you know exactly who has access to data. It's just you and whoever you give access to via Nextcloud. It's honestly a great setup for businesses even, where you wanna be able to have your workforce being able to share files in between each other and everything like that. And if you're a larger business, you can even set it up to only allow connections from your domain. This means that you can limit who has access to it even further and really just get fine control over all that. Overall, Nextcloud is an awesome project and there's a, just a ton of stuff you can do within it. And there are constantly more updates that increase your amount of features, everything like that. And so we're gonna be setting this up in AWS LightSail to really make it its own cloud. And so the first thing you need to go ahead and do is just log into the AWS console and open up Amazon LightSail. Then we're just gonna start by creating an instance. And so for this, there are a few options here, but what we're gonna to wanna to do is set up OS only, and we'll just do Ubuntu 20.04. And that's what you wanna use. I wouldn't use Amazon Linux. Instead, Ubuntu, it's got the snap image. That'll just make this really easy to set up, manage, and get updates, which is really important for anything you're gonna be exposing to the internet. And then down here, if you are doing this for a business, make sure to have automatic snapshots. That can mean you can roll back the clock and get any data that needs to be changed on there. It's really great. Then you've got a few options here for pricing and basically how much resources it's got. You probably wanna start with a $5 a month version because of that extra RAM and that extra storage. And down here, that's two terabytes you can download per month, which is a great option. What you can also do is you can add in additional storage volumes to this directly, either using S3 or just through LightSail if that's easier for you. And so there's a lot of options here for whatever you're using. And you've kind of got to figure out, hey, is S3 going to be cheaper because it's just a bunch of bulk storage? Or am I going to have less storage but a lot more downloads, meaning that LightSail would be cheaper? And so once you figure that out, you can go ahead and select it and give it a name. And you can use your key value tags, everything like that. But for now, we're not gonna be doing that. And so we're just gonna go ahead and create an instance. And so now it's gonna take about a minute or so to go ahead and get started up. So we're just gonna wait for that. All right, and so now it's finally got ahead and launched. So now we can go ahead and click on it and do a couple more configurations on it. So if you wanted to add in storage here, just directly through LightSail, which is by far the easiest, what you can do is you can just go ahead and add a new disk here. And these are the price points you've got per month. And so if you want 250 gigs, it's 25 bucks, which is a lot more expensive than S3. So I would recommend using S3 unless you're going to be needing really fast access to all of this, or if you're going to be downloading massive files because S3 you actually have to pay for, whereas this, it goes towards your monthly allotment. And so you can add your disk in here, but S3 is also probably going to be cheaper for most organizations. And I'll probably be doing another video on that. And so we'll not be doing that, so we'll just go back. And we can also go into networking. So we need to do a couple of things here. First, we need to set up a public IP address with a static IP address. That way it does not change. So we'll just go ahead and click attach static IP address. And we'll go ahead and click create static IP address. We'll call it Nextcloud IP. And it is free as long as it's attached to an instance. 
And so now it is attached. And so now we've got this static IP address right here. And so that way you don't have an IP address that changes and this is the public IP address you're going to need. And so now we're good. So we can go back home and we're gonna go back into Nextcloud and we'll see that that IP address is once again the one we want. And so now what we'll actually do is now that we've got that IP address, we need to start off by going through and copying it. And we're going to need to set up our DNS server wherever you've hosted your domain name to point to that whenever we say Nextcloud and whatever your thing is, or however you like to get to it. So to do that, I'm gonna go into Google Domains, which is where I've got spacerex.co registered to. And under DNS settings, I'm just gonna go down to custom resource records, and I'm going to say Nextcloud. And so this way, anytime I type nextcloud.spacerex.co, which is my host name, I'm gonna go ahead and be able to connect to this IP4 address right here, and just click add. And so that's all there is to it. That way, now every time we type nextcloud.spacerex.co, we'll be brought to that IP4 address. And we can do that with a DNS propagator check. And so now we'll say nextcloud. And we'll just go ahead and search. It'll take a little while. So you can see right here, this one's already updated. But overall, it does take a little while for everything to update. So that's actually why we did this as soon as we could, because it does take a little while. And you can see slowly over time, everything will propagate and you'll get everything hooked up. So now we don't need Google domains anymore, so we can close that and we'll go back in. And now while that is being propagated, we'll go ahead and start setting everything up. So we'll go back in Nextcloud and we're going to go into networking again and we're going to do a couple of things. First off, we're going to disable IPv6 because quite frankly, you probably do not need to support it in your small organization. And so we're just going to disable it because it's going to be a bigger headache than it is worth in my opinion. And so it's just gonna say, hey, if you give up IP6, we're not gonna keep your IP address for it, that's fine. And so that's just a lot better for security. You don't have to worry about stuff. And so now we just need to add a new firewall rule to allow HTTPS traffic because you wanna have an SSL certificate associated with it. So we'll just say HTTPS and we'll allow it. And if you are restricting to just your organization, you can toggle that on here, as well as obviously with SSH and with um, HTTP. So we'll just do that and click create. And so now we'll be basically just opening up the port 443 through the firewall. And so that's a really nice thing that LightCell allows you to do is it's just so easy to manage your firewall. All right, and so now our networking is done, so we can go up and we can look at snapshots. I don't have them enabled on this, but if you are gonna be doing this for business stuff, it's not a bad idea to keep snapshots because that way if something happens and your entire instant gets corrupted or anything like that, you can roll back the clock, which is nice. But overall, that's all we've got. And so now we're just gonna go ahead and click connect. We've got the username and password, which is your key value chain, but we'll just go ahead and click connect using SSH and we're gonna go ahead and start doing everything. So the first time, what I would really recommend doing is just run a sudo apt update. And then we may as well also just upgrade all these packages with a sudo apt upgrade. And it's gonna take a while. But this way we make sure that everything gets upgraded and that we start with the most recent version of everything, which is critical for security. All right, and so sometimes you get conflicts like this. What I would really generally like recommend doing is AWS can have its own configuration. And so what we'll do is anytime I run into these, I keep the local version currently installed. As you can see right here, it's the SSH config which is AWS's custom SSH configuration for LightSail instances. And so we wanna keep that to make sure we can always connect to it using AWS LightSail. And if you use the package maintainers, you might run into some compatibility issues. So I would keep the local version currently installed. All right, and so now that it has finally gone and installed, I'll go ahead and clear it to give us some space. All right, and so now that we've got all those packages installed, we can now go ahead and install Nextcloud. And to do this, we're gonna be using what's called Ubuntu Snap which is this kind of package system 
have app system that allows you to get an entire configuration for an application such as Nextcloud installed in one go. And the real advantage of it is it's really easy to install and it's really easy to maintain, especially when it comes to security updates. You don't have to go through and manually reconfigure everything and do everything yourself. You can just kind of update it through Snap. And that way you don't have to worry about, okay, are all my versions secure and correct? You just have to make sure you update Snap. It's not perfect. If you want super custom control, like adding an SMB and things like that, it is a little bit more complicated, but for hosting on AWS especially, it's perfect because you just get everything updated whenever there's a new security release. And so to do that, it's incredibly easy. We're just gonna say sudo snap install nextcloud. And it's just like that. It's gonna go ahead and download it and just do everything pretty much for us. And so this snap configuration also comes with a proper database and everything. It's this full fledged package that you get that really makes everything run great. And it's so much better than the Docker containers database because the Docker container uses a flat file for the database, which does not scale at all. And so now we'll go ahead and issue some commands using snap and it's also installed OCC, which you can use to configure all of Nextcloud. So to first set up our admin account, we're just gonna do sudo nextcloud dot manual install. And you're going to do username and password. And so this is going to be the administrator's username and the administrator's password. So I'm going to do space rex and space rex for both of those because I'm tearing down this instance as soon as I'm done. It might get mad at me about me as username and password is the same, but it's fine. This is just for this tutorial. Have a secure admin username and password, please. And so now behind the scenes, it's actually just setting up Nextcloud instance. And if we get this, that means we're good. But right now, if we tried to hit nextcloud.spacerex.co, we would not get it yet because by default, it only opens it up to local host. And so to do that, we're going to use OCC. So we're gonna use sudo nextcloud.occ config system set trusted domains and then whichever number in the list you are. So it started at zero, but that's local host. So we're gonna do one and dash dash value. And we're going to say spacerex.co. All right, and so real quick, it's actually a star.spacerex.co because you wanna be able to access it using any host name or what I also could have done is just said nextcloud.spacerex.co instead of the full one. But I did run into an issue there where it doesn't, did not connect because it was just spacerex.co because it was actually coming from a subdomain of that. So just say either the full address or use the star as the wild card to say anything connecting to spacerex.co in the host name will be allowed. So there's just that. But now if we go ahead and open a new tab and say nextcloud.spacerex.code, we'll see right here that we've got the Nextcloud instant. And so now we'll do spacerex spacerex. And just like that, we are in, and we have successfully connected to our LightSail instance. And so now what we need to do is we need to set this up with SSL so we get this secured and using proper encryption so nobody can just see our passwords and such in plain text. So yada, yada, yada. And you can administrate it over here with the settings. Since we're administrator, we've got all the different options in the world that you could want there, and you can really tune your thing to get it working great. But first off, we wanna set up SSL and Nextcloud has made this incredibly easy. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to go through and do a sudo nextcloud dot enable HTTPS and we're going to choose let's encrypt. And so let's encrypt allows you to get a signed SSL certificate for your domain name incredibly easily. So I'd highly recommend that. If you wanted your own SSL certificate self-signed, it would run into an issue in every browser. It'd say, hey, this is not secure. You would know it was secure, but it would say it's not secure until you have to click through that. So I really recommend just getting a signed SSL certificate. And so you're going to go through and it's gonna ask you these things. And if we followed the setup in the beginning, all of these are true, so say yes. And so now you need to give it an email. And this is actually a good one to have because it'll let you know if your thing's about to expire. So say it fails to properly get the new SSL certificate for some reason, it will send you an email and it'll tell you, hey, your cert's about to expire. So you can check on it before the thing does and it starts kicking people out. And now enter your domain names. And we're just gonna do this for nextcloud 
www.spacerex.co. And that's the only way we're resolving it, so we're just gonna select that one. And now it's just gonna go through and do it kinda all for us, it's awesome. And just like that, we are done. So now, a simple refresh on the web page. And look right there, we now have a lock in the upper left hand corner. We have a properly signed SSL certificate from R3. R3 is one of the people uh, Let's Encrypt uses, but this is a signed proper SSL certificate. And so now we are basically done. You now can set up everything with Nextcloud and just run it off of here. And it's so easy to set up and use. And it's all hosted in the cloud. So you don't have to worry about anything happening. You can just go through it and really use it as your own Google Drive, but it's hosted on your own platform, being able to have full control over what you need with it and making sure that only you have access to this data. It and now it's just really gonna work for us. We can do whatever you'd like with Nextcloud. You can install all the apps you'd like. You can have all your users on there. And it's just so easy to set up on AWS Lightsail. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below. And if you wanna get early access to all my videos, join as a sponsor, and I've got a link for that in the description. All right, have a good one. Bye.